Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first episode of Beyond the Corridor. Beyond the Corridor. Uh, we are going to be filling the Tuesday night slot here on TTRPG, playing a three session Kids on Brooms uh, chronicle or campaign or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I am going to be the GM, as I often uh, am, of this game. And before I set the scene for us to start, I just want all of my players to introduce both of themselves with their pronouns that they use and your character and the pronouns that your character uses. Uh, I'll like uh, I'll pick one of you to start and you can popcorn it to each other. Uh, Layla, you're like you're my victim today. <laughs> I'm happy to be a victim. Um, I'm <laughs> Layla Bamanziari. My pronouns are these, they're, they're like she, her, but they're a little zesty um, and they, them. And my character is Guinevere, goes by Gwen Pastel with she, her pronouns. And when you popcorn it, you just pick who, who like the next oh, person yes. to go is. Oh, yes, popcorn yeah. it. Okay. Um, Christina, Christina. Hi, <laughs> my name is Christiana or Chris. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. I am playing January Jenkins or JJ and uh, her pronouns are also she, her. Uh, take it away, Phil. Hi, I am Phil. I am comfortable with any pronouns. I am playing Quinn Carlton, who uses they, them pronouns. Uh, to you, Josh. Um, hi, my name is Joshua Zimbrano. I use he, him pronouns, and I'll be playing Thiago Miguel Casareno, otherwise known as Theo, uh, who also uses he, him pronouns. And uh, I'm going to pass it to Miriam. Hey everyone, I'm Mariam. I go by they, them pronouns, and I will be playing Anamika, who also uses they, them pronouns. Back to you, GM. Back to me. Uh, I'm Max. I use they, he pronouns, but also you should be focusing on them, and I'm just here to push uh, the story along. So why don't I set the scene for you today? Um, in America, uh, in the city of Chicago, uh, deep beneath the waters of a lake familiar to many Americans, like Michigan, uh, lies Alabaster Academy, a, a city school for students, uh, mostly American, but sometimes from other places, uh, maybe a few Canadians uh, pitched in there, um, who find themselves inclined to uh, magic, the arcane arts, um, and such things. Uh, the school lies in a series of uh, large biodomes at the bottom of the lake, upheld by such magic, um, and is separated into an upper and a lower school for uh, younger children and older students, uh, some of which are young adults per se. Um, and it is the beginning of the school year at Alabaster Academy currently, uh, classes have been going on for a few weeks, and uh, as, as we approach uh, a month of classes being held, um, the chatter in the school is all about the back-to-school bash. Uh, this is a, uh, a dance of sorts, uh, as corny as it gets even in a uh, non-magical school, uh, to allow the students to celebrate coming back for a new year, continuing their education, uh, something, something, motivation, something, something. <laughs> uh, you don't really need a reason to have a dance, <laughs> I don't think. So we're having a dance uh, in uh, just a few days this weekend. Um, and uh, our students here are uh, currently on their uh, classes at the end of uh, the end of Wednesday. Uh, so some of you may be sitting at the end of uh, Magizoology, uh, a very popular class uh, with the upper school students even offering a second section uh, that specifies in aquatics for students that uh, care to continue that track. Uh, some of you may find yourselves in uh, conveyance, a sort of means to learn how to teleport here and there and everywhere. Uh, and some of you, I believe, might have an off period right now, 
Gwen, <laughs> you don't have any. Uh, you don't have anything in the uh, Wednesday third block. Am I in healing? Is um, that what Wednesday two means? No, that's like the first class. That's your first class oh, on Wednesdays. Yeah, I'm just hanging out. Yeah, so so you're hanging out. Um, uh, and I, I believe you're probably just outside uh, the Magizoology classroom, which is very close to a lot of the main halls because there's uh, through to some of the other um, things like the dining hall and rec room and stuff like that. Um, as you can hear the professor um, finishing up their assignment and releasing uh, the students. Uh, for those of you in Magizoology, why did I do this to myself? <laughs> um, uh, the class is taught by a Professor Estrade. There are two Professor Estrades, uh, siblings, uh, who teach the uh, Magizoology classes at the school. Um, and uh, both of their names start with B. So uh, lots of ridicule from the students, but uh, both very cool people. And uh, Professor Estrade uh, closes his book with uh, the lesson for the day and kind of hops up uh, to perch in his front desk chair to address you. And he says, um, and as you all know, the uh, back to school bash is this weekend. Uh, I can tell you, I know because there have been like three like little proposal things or whatever you call them in this class already. So I appreciate you guys not doing that. Um, today, uh, I'll be a chaperone at the dance uh, with other Professor Estrade, so I'll be keeping an eye on you all. Uh, gives a few of these uh, all around the room, and uh, a bell rings, and he says, uh, yeah, and I. Uh, I hope you guys have a good time. Be safe. I feel obligated to tell you all these things as some of my senior students. You know. You know I like you guys. Uh, you're free to go, and he uh, whisks his hand, uh, away, uh, and Gwen, you can see the rush of students coming out of this, uh, popular class. Some other classes also, like conveyance, which is happening at the time, trickling out into the hallway as students maybe can return to their dorms or go get a bite to eat now that classes are over for the day. I think I'll probably go somewhere else. And I probably like when everyone um, comes out and everyone's like swarming around me, I immediately go outside to find a quiet tree to sit under. Okay. Yes. As I will often try to remind people, you are underwater. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the school is underwater. Um, uh, luckily there is no shortage of space. Uh, there are plenty of nooks and crannies, whether it be in the library, in your house's uh, common area, your dormitory, uh, even kind of spaces in lesser used hallways uh, and things like that where you can find a place to sit. Oh, yeah. Then I'll probably go to the library and pull out some random book on magic anthropology and start reading it. The library is uh, actually clearing out as well. Not that there was a class there, just that most people who were sparing their time waiting for friends to get out of class uh, no longer need to do that. Uh, so uh, you recognize one of the professors presiding over the library who gives you a curt wave and you are welcome to uh, sit with your book and perhaps get some reading and studying in uh, before uh, it comes around to dinner time, uh, per se. Uh, let's do uh, January and Miriam. You were both in the class that just got out, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you guys have uh, a few classes together uh, and know each other well enough, having been students at the school for a number of years. Uh, um, and Amika, your entire lifetime, uh, pretty much you've presided 
uh, at Alabaster. Uh, and yeah, you've just finished this uh, very nerve wracking lesson on uh, wrangling unruly creatures, uh, only to be let off knowing that uh, your professor, a professor that one of you happens to be rather close with, uh, is going to be presiding over the school event this weekend. And that is news to you. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think, January, about this dance? Are you excited? I mean, yeah, it's always so much fun to go out and socialize and just uh, be loud and, I don't know, cause trouble. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I just, um, I, I'm excited, but like, I remember the last time there was a dance like this, um, there were a couple of four poises up to no purpose, and then I had to talk them off of like, going somewhere else, and it was just, oh, like, I wonder, <laughs> and you see that um, Anamika is just a little anxious of just like, uh, thinking about all sorts of creatures that uh, might show up at the dance um, since I feel like it, it happens somewhere where we get a clear picture, like we see, have a clear view of uh, all like the, the words aquatic life around us as like uh, sort of um, um, yes. background. Uh, the the area where the event will be held, uh, as you know, from past years and past events, um, is kind of its own uh, like little event dome. Uh, it has view of the water, and so you occasionally see uh, fish and things like that, as well as Emily or Melly, uh, known to the students, a uh, sea serpent of, of sorts. Uh, uh, akin to the Loch Ness Monster uh, that presides within the lake. Uh, Emily is very much known as a gentle giant, and so whenever she makes an appearance past uh, one of the bubbles, uh, whether it be in a class or especially at an event, uh, she gets just a ton of attention. <laughs> Everyone loves it. <laughs> Are you going to ask anyone to the dance? <laughs> no, um... I would rather go by myself if no one's going to ask me. Okay. What about you? Any plans for it? Any special someone's? Um, um, I maybe I don't know. I haven't made my mind up. <laughs> I just <laughs> try to change the subject <laughs> in, in this weird sort of like uh, gay panic of like, ah, don't ask me. <laughs> Okay. Keep your secrets. Yeah. Just and, and Quinn, your last class of the day, uh, conveyance, uh, taught by a professor that you are quite familiar with, Professor Cinderwood. Um, professor Cinderwood has always been uh, a little bit odd, uh, not necessarily in a bad way. Uh, his teaching methods definitely raise some eyebrows, and there is a line to get out of class today because uh, he has locked the door shut and is having you all practice by having you teleport past the door to leave instead of walking through it. Uh, so, uh, so while magizoology lets out all at once, it's more of a uh, conveyor belt-like stream for uh, those of you in that class. Um, you're jammed in in the middle of the line and eventually come to the door to uh, hopefully pop through it. Um, yeah, when, when they reach the front of the line, they kind of uh, look up at their professor and say, this should be a piece of cake. I've been doing this for some number of years. I don't remember. And then they say, uh, secret base. And try and tell and try and convey themselves to their favorite spot in the library that nobody goes to instead of just the other side of the door. Okay. Uh, I think you can go ahead and roll uh, brains a uh, difficulty of five. First roll. First roll. First roll. First, first roll. roll. First roll. First roll. First roll. Too, too, many, roll. too many games I run, like there's just like never dice rolling and like <laughs> everybody has dice. <laughs> Five. 
you you got you hit the five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so All right. this is this is the first time Professor Cinderwood has had you put this into practice uh, this semester. So you're a little bit rusty. Uh, a lot of students don't typically practice uh, outside of school unless they're in their own homes, just at a risk of revealing themselves to uh, people uh, in their towns at home. And so it takes a few seconds, like you say it out loud, you're not moving, you're not moving, you know that you're thinking through the right thought process and you kind of give your wand another jerk and then you go, uh, not just out into the hall, but into the library. Uh, the professor remaining the- right next to me. <laughs> Depends on how secluded um, of a spot in the library you went to. Super secluded. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Gwen is currently in a kind of one of those uh, reading nooks. Uh, that's uh, carved out. You know the ones. Uh, mm-hmm. Kind of a little carpeted area. And you pop up kind of right next to it. And uh, the professor is looking down at whatever paperwork she's doing. Looks up. Kind of goes... <laughs> and uh looks back down to her work uh nothing to uh not be expected uh but just a little bit startling uh and you look down to your right and there is Gwen Gwen kind of looks at Gwen and says um oh I'm I'm sorry people aren't usually here um I hope I'm not bothering you and kind of just like sits down on the floor and like reaches into their school bags and pulls out like a bag of like nuts and starts eating Oh, um, no, you're okay. And then I just kind of like, I put on, ear, I put an earplug because the sound of someone eating bothers me, but I'm not going to tell you that. And then I just oh. keep reading. Yeah, I, I think Quinn eats like a little bit of the bag and puts it back in the bag and then kind of just lays down on the floor and like doesn't move for like five minutes. Oh, I, I, t- I definitely turn to you at that point. And I'm like, um, hey, are you, what, what are you doing? This is like a, a normal routine for me. I mean, you get out of class, you go to the, go to the nice spot that people don't usually go to, sorry, uh, to, um, and then you just, uh, decompress. That's the, that's the word. That's oh. a thing that people say, right? Yeah. That's yes, a, that's a right. word that you all have heard from uh, the school counselor who's very, very enthusiastic about like putting out like self-care memos uh, and, and things like that. <laughs> You've all seen decompress in like <laughs> a slightly corny red font. Maybe it's Comic Sans. Yeah. You see... You can tell Gwen is thinking about something and is nervous, but it's just like, well, um, I, I don't, I, I'm Gwen. I, uh, I hi, I'm, I'm Quinn. I don't know if we've met before. I'm really bad with names well, and faces. I don't, I'm not, no, you're okay. I, um, okay, okay. I've seen you around, like I know who you are, but I don't, we, I've never really talked. So I thought I would, if we're going to be sharing. Things, yeah. Yeah, I uh, don't talk to most of the people. I There's a lot from what I... Th- I think there's a lot of people at the school. I don't know. I've never counted. Um, it feels like a lot. It feels like a lot. But yeah, I mean, this is a nice spot. I mean, you can... you can. There's like a window that like you can see the, the water from. Most of the windows you can see the water from. But it's still nice. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. Well, Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Okay. And then we have. Oh, you don't have a you don't have a, a Wednesday uh, third slot class either, uh, Theo. Do you? Uh, so <laughs> I'm so glad I made these schedules. I, uh, <laughs> if, if anyone in chat is interested, I'm happy to provide you a link to the, the giant master schedule I made with everyone's <laughs> schedules on it because I worked hard on it and everyone gets to see it now and I get to use it all the time. It's impressive. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> it really, really is impressive. It's great. I, I did, in fact, show my mom uh, 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, it's real stage manager energy, and I'm here for it. I love it. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> yes, so you two are, are free. What are you up to in this uh, block of time uh, after classes, but uh, not quite at dinner? Uh, you perhaps have uh, an hour or so now that the third block has ended for the day. Um, I think Theo's probably found his way into the, um, maybe like storehouse or like greenhouse where the, um, potions professor likely keeps some of their stuff. I don't know. I, a, as like class president, as someone who is, you know, very, very uh, communicative with the teachers, I feel like I have decent rapport and I would know the teacher's schedules as well. So I might either sneak into the potions, like, uh, uh, all the, where they, they get the herbs to actually make the potions or if, you know, the potions professor is actually nice, maybe they let him in. Uh, yeah. So different teachers teach, uh, horticulture, which is, would involve more of the, sure. uh, growing of the herbs and potions. So, uh, whoever you think you would be more familiar with, uh, you are welcome to try to go check out, but the majority of the uh, professors are familiar with you, uh, Theo, as you uh, have to work with them a little more closely after an election. If someone has a problem in a class, yeah. you have to go talk to them, be like, I see, you know, so-and-so is struggling and they asked me to talk to you. <laughs> Do a lot yes. of mediation, you know, so I understand where the professors are coming from a lot of the time and how stressed they are, you know, and they appreciate that for sure. Um, yeah, so I think I'll sneak into then one of the horticul- uh, horticulture professors, like greenhouses or, or, or warehouses where they keep some stuff, and um, just to get some quiet, as long as there's not a class going on at that moment. And um, I'll just be talking to my snake. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have Smudge out. Smudge is my uh, albino uh, ball python who's got like splotches of black. Uh, and so I, um, as a person who also has wild speak, I can like kind of communicate to him on like a very, a very, you know, simple level, but I'm just kind of like telling him about my day, about the dance, how stressed I am about the dance coming up and how many preparations, the fact that I've had to go to like all the classrooms today and already had to like do a presentation and talk about the dance and try to encourage people to go to the dance. Right. Because we, you know, we want to make sure that this dance is as successful because last year's was a little lower than it was the year before. And a lot of fingers got pointed at me and that's just not cool. You know, that's not good for my image. And so I really don't want that. So You're I'm just really kind of... putting me in the stress of school <laughs> right now. Like... <laughs> Right. So, so that's, that's basically where Theo's at. He's just talking. He's got, he's got, he's got his hand out like this. And um, I think Smudge's face is just, you know, like that, that puppy thing where they put their, they put their head like on the couch. I think Smudge's head is just there and he's just kind of like talking with him and he licks his like cheek every once in a while. And they're just talking, spending this rare moment of solitude to be able to, uh, to kind of decompress from the day. Yeah, uh, Professor Waska teaches both healing and horticulture. Uh, being familiar with her, you took horticulture with her last year. Uh, she doesn't really question you when you come into the greenhouses. She never assumes that you're doing something nefarious. And if you did, uh, you'd surely get caught. Um, and so you can uh, take a seat among some of the uh, flowers and the herbs that are grown uh, to be used in the kitchen, uh, and, uh, Smudge is happy to listen to you, uh, he's happy to be, uh, out of your pocket or bag, uh, for some, uh, floral, uh, uh, fresh air, and, uh, as you talk to Smudge about your stress for, for the day, uh, you can feel a sort of, uh, like, warmth through this basic communication and, uh, like, faith in you, um, even with like so much as basic understanding of the world, um, like he knows that you always keep him safe, and to him that means that you're successful. So he knows that you'll be successful again. Max, you better stop. Max, you better <laughs> stop. Uh, I love it. I love it. I'm eating it up. I think. I think. Um, I think Theo is like 
it, it hits Theo very hard. Uh, you know, Smudge is one of the few people that like is regularly kind of giving the support to Theo, which is great. I, I also like to think if the room is that like flowery and has that many, like that much perfume going around, I like to think that, you know, while Smudge is giving this like kind of encouragement, he also gets distracted and just like his tongue just like starts going crazy. I have to be like, wait, no, no, wait, Smudge, wait, wait, what were you saying? Sorry, what were you saying? And then he has to like come back and talk to me. You've got um, the mint, the basil, yeah. the thyme, the hibiscus. It's it's a lot. It's a lot mm-hmm. going on in there. Uh, and that's why it's usually the most empty because the smell is a little bit overwhelming. Uh, but for the solitude of it, I would feel that uh, Theo probably doesn't mind. Um, and while you are all in your... Uh, uh, separate areas, your own little uh, uh, little nooks within the school. Uh, you spend your time, uh, you do some decompressing, some chatting, or some reading, and eventually a uh, familiar sound uh, carries through the school, um, different than a class bell, uh, and you all know it uh, as the sign that the dining hall is open for dinner. It it rings out every day, even on the weekends uh, and Fridays, because the school has a four-day week. Uh, I think that wizard culture would be a little bit ahead of (laughs) Monday culture in that. Um, So (laughs) yeah, every every day, including the the weekends, it it rings at the same time, and uh, everyone heads in to get their favorite meals hot off the griddle or um, sometimes cold, I guess, if you're into cold food. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but the, the whole the whole upper school uh, often eats together. Um, and while the dining hall, hall offers some like traditional long tables for houses uh, when it comes to like an opening ceremony or closing ceremony for the year, students are encouraged to sit with whoever they uh, would like to at uh, some smaller round tables. Uh, They all probably accommodate like eight to 10 people um, after they've uh, sat down with their food. Um, January will find the biggest table that she always sits at um, and sit at the head of it um, and (laughs) just kind of wait for people to just flood the table around her so she can conversate. Are you going to wait to get your food until uh, after everyone comes to surround you? Yes. Oh, of, oh, but of course. How could I even <laughs> ask? I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> why would I say something? People first, food later. Yeah. She has I, black. She's good. I can, I can really respect that. Uh, <laughs> students should be allowed to eat in class because teachers don't know why you might need to eat. Uh, and that's not their business. Uh, will this really just be a stream like of me talking about my like controversial school related <laughs> views? Um, and implementing them controversial, and, uh, but and so far completely correct. Them. Yes. Uh, so uh, I don't know how early the rest of you come in, uh, but some familiar faces, uh, some people that you know from your houses and classes, uh, Lillian Robinson and Florence Pennell, they are uh, two very close friends. They take pretty much their full schedule together every year. um, And they come over to join you when they see you, um, as well as some other people who take kitchen magic, who uh, are familiar with you from there and are friendly with the professor who is also Um, always here during the dinner shift as he is the head uh, chef uh, for Alabaster. And uh, to all of you, because you currently take his class, he has to be um, Professor Kumar. But to other students who don't take his class, he lets them call him Rahul. Um, And if you're really special, you can call him Rahul while you're in his class. Um, But you got to be you got to be careful with it. (laughs) Um, so the dining hall slowly starts to, um, fill up, but most people, uh, have just put their bags on a table to reserve it and then, uh, have gone to get their food. Um, I feel like Anamika is the type to come in and sit down at the table with like three or four plates, like a buffet style where you get all you want at once and just sit down and then you don't have to get up and serve yourself again. 
you're conserving your energy. Uh, I think that's valid. Um, Are you going to sit at the same table? Yeah. And also one one of the plates is just like a a big heaping plate of all like all those sides that I know my friends like. So it's just there for everyone to just help themselves do extra. That's so nice. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, So uh, you sit down at this uh, half full table uh, with January, Florence, uh, Lillian, and uh, now yourself, uh, all Kitchen Magic students uh, uh, thus far. Uh, and some of them, are L- Lillian and Florence, have some uh, smaller plates of, of different things. Uh, everyone has their taste, and there's a pretty wide variety, uh, given the magical ability to uh, not make food, but to make adjustments to food. Uh, nothing can come out of thin air, but uh, things can be spiced and infused and, and such and such. So uh, students don't often complain about how things taste here. Um, and I yes, pull out a little you can condiment come... uh, thing of different. Uh, so there's like chili salt, there's salt, there's pepper, there's chaat masala, there's uh, limes. <laughs> there's like a little mini mini bar of just spice jars. I can imagine Anamika carrying uh, like one of those desk organizer things and it's meant for (laughs) for, like your mini stapler and stuff but inside (laughs) there's a bunch of (laughs) charred spices. (laughs) Yep, because you never know when something needs to be seasoned. Yeah, so the the seasoning seasoning is here January. Uh, (laughs) What about the rest of you? Uh, Are you dinner folks or are you eat at home folks? I probably get something from the hall, like I get like shawarma, but then I take it back to my dorm. That's fair. No one, no one's gonna stop you. Uh, one of the no one attend- can't stop me from my shawarma. That's something that no one can stop me from. Completely <laughs> <laughs> understandable. Uh, one of the attendants will give you a second, like empty plate to cover your plate so it stays uh, warm. Uh, when you leave. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh, no problem, sweetie. You don't want to eat cold shawarma, do you? I mean, I would, but I would prefer (laughs) it. I would prefer it warm. Yes. Great. Quinn? Um, I think Quinn, like, will just get, like, one plate and just like pile it with like a bunch of just mm-hmm. random foods, just like not even really looking at what's like what they're grabbing um, and then grab a bunch of napkins and then go sit down on a random table and just start wrapping it up in napkins and putting it in their backpack. And then like until there's like a reasonable amount, amount left on the plate and then start eating snacks for later. Oh. Oh, yes. Okay. So January <laughs> and uh, Anamika you witness this sort of uh, squirrel-like behavior, dare I say, uh, as Quinn takes like an empty spot with the two empty spots at the table uh, to either side of them still open and just gets to immediate work on this uh, mountainous pile of grab-and-go food. Are they Can sitting at the table? Yeah, if if you you don't give me table preferences, I'm gonna put mm-hmm. you all at the same table by default. <laughs> I think it makes sense. Quinn kind of just like I think Quinn sits at just like a different table every time because they don't really care where they sit. And so if there's like an open seat, they're just kind of like, okay, this is where I am. Out now. of character question: Is uh-huh. that where Quinn got the nut? Like uh, you think you're putting it in napkins? <laughs> probably. <laughs> Incredible. It was probably so from I like lunch. You have a napkin and you unfolded it and you started eating. Incredible. <laughs> I also point at the spice, my little spice mini bar, and be like, "Hey, if you want to season your nuts." <laughs> huh? Oh, uh, <laughs> thanks. Um, there's a lot here. I don't really know what would be good on anything, so I'm just kind of keeping. it keeping it in here and kind of points to their bag i'm uh, this might sound rude do i hi do i know you i'm quinn hi quinn um i think i see you around somewhere um i think 
I feel like we've taken a class before. Maybe not this year. Uh, you guys I- are in the same house. Right. Yep. <laughs> <She> yep. <burned. laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. That. Also, I think we ha- we we're in the same dorm. That might be why you look familiar. Sorry, faces just like go in one eye and out the other. What? You know, that's, that's valid. I I usually find it's really hard to keep track of um, people, but I can ease. Like you know, I can I can tell the difference between Melly and Nessie and Jesse and other. Anyways, never mind. Um, yeah. Uh, that's a good help skill. Yourself. Yeah, yeah. Just help yourself to the stuff. Like, oh, I, that's I, that's really nice. Thank you. And I think they kind of just like don't really know what they're doing and take like a pinch of something and just put it on one random little napkin and then fold it up. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise for later. Okay, mm. uh, Theo, um, are you or Smudge hungry? <laughs> Um, well, no, first off, Theo doesn't eat in the mess. He's, he's, it's his last year here and he probably (laughs) orders from like Magic Grubhub and gets food delivered to his room separately, but he is in the mess hall. He does go to the mess hall, of course. This is a perfect time to take inventory of who's coming to the dance. And so I think he's got like a silent clicker behind his back and he's just kind of walking around to all the different tables and like talking him up he's checking in with the first year just been like hey how's it going you know hey by any chance how, what do you guys think about the dance can i just see like how many of you guys are actually going to be coming and he's going around and he's like quietly clicking and like taking like a poll of how many people are going to be going to the dance and like asking for feedback just like hey where'd you hear about it yeah you're okay cool 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 cool, cool. what made you want to go exhausting it's exhausting and I think I think he will come to this table um, that all of these people are seated at and kind of like just, you know, give a nod to Gwen and say, hey, Gwen, how's it going? January. Well, Florence, Lillian, good to see you guys. Uh, Monica, nice to see you. Um, uh, Quinn, hi, it's good to I, I rarely get to see you out, uh, out and about nowadays, but it's good to, to see you. Um, so can I just ask, uh, how many of you guys are thinking about going to the dance? Cool. All right. Lawrence um, and Lillian both like shake their heads uh, uh, simultaneously. I was, I was thinking about maybe going. I'm not sure yet. I I I tend to wait until the day, but I don't think I can do that with this. So. Uh, sure. Yeah. No. 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 That's great. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We have a lot of activities planned. Um, uh, even looks at Florence and Lillian, who obviously had like a resounding like head shake. No, be like, so uh, I mean, uh, can I ask for you all? Uh, do I know what year Florence and Lillian are? Are they in the same year as January? Uh, they are uh, one year behind you guys, so they are eighteen instead of nineteen. Okay, well, I'll just be like, can I ask? Like, is there something that would like make you want to go? Was it was it something that happened last year? I just want to make sure you feel comfortable going to you know these school functions. One of them like leans over to the other's ear and whispers something with their hand uh, in front of their mouth like this. And eventually uh, Lillian says, uh, it was just kind of lame last year. Mm, the, yeah, decor- you know, the decorations were tacky. Yeah. And you know, we're really I trying to work on that. Don't really have anything to wear. So I think I'm just going to stay in dorm. Oh, you can borrow something of mine. It's not a big deal. And I didn't go last year, so uh, I'm going this year. It's going to be a lot better. Wonderful. Wonderful Um, to hear you you hear a... (laughs) Behind the back. (laughs) (laughs) Wonderful. (laughs) She tries to cough at the same time to cover it. Sorry, what was that? Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, January, if you'd be willing to um, let me borrow something. I don't have a... I don't have a lot of selections to um, choose from. And if I, if I had something nice to wear, I might. Oh my I goodness. Might, might please. Go. Like if you, if everyone just wants to come to my dorm before the dance, we can have a little dress up party and I'll just like dress everyone up and make you look real cute. Um, I have a lot of purple. So um, it's probably going to be like purple. Great. 
uh, is the theme. Um, sorry, but uh, I think it'll just be a lot of fun. What do you think? And you guys hear like a little squeak <laughs> <laughs> come from um, the pin, like the brooch that uh, January is wearing. And it like kind of moves a little bit, but it stays on her sweater. Um, and she's like, I, I, I know. <laughs> Grandma Ma will be so happy to have you guys all there. <laughs> I can bring snacks. Yes. So actually you can't, unfortunately, the, uh, the school will be providing food there. And so any kind of snacks will not be allowed inside. Uh, we also prohibit any kind of, you know, uh, enchantments on any of the flavored water fountains. We don't want any of those spiked because if that happens, we're going to have to dispel that. And that causes a whole lot of ruckus between, you know, the water pipe. So just really bring yourselves. And, um, if you have any recommendations for food or snacks that you would like prepared, we can totally make that. Event. Okay. Oh, come on, you are you going to stop us if I see a granola bar in my purse? Come on. I hand you a scroll that's really, really thick for snack suggestions. <laughs> okay. Uh, and he make takes your and he goes. And pita bread with actual pockets. Because sometimes, for some reason, pita bread doesn't have pockets. It doesn't make sense. I don't doesn't. understand. Gwen, but I hear you. I hear <laughs> you. Um, there's actually a box out uh in the uh, Groose uh, common room for suggestions as well. So you can feel free to write all of those down. And Amika, thank you for this. I will go ahead and take a look at this as soon as I can. All right. Thank you all so much. Um, and I hope to see all of you there. It's like a couple of feet long. Uh, <laughs> I think Theo, Theo, Theo like kind of starts unraveling and then he sees that it just, he feels the weight and the fact that the weight doesn't shift as he's like still unrolling. And he just goes, okay, you know what? Yeah, we'll just save that for thank later. You. But Hey, Theo, I have a question. Um, are you like, are you the one that's putting on the dance? I'm one of many. I, you know, I there's no one person who I think can run something as extravagant as this. But, you know, we, uh, we're we a team. You know, we're all a team. Um, I don't know where my team is right now. But uh, right now I'm I'm kind of leading it, sure. Um, so you like to, say, to help with sex? Um, actually, yeah, that would be wonderful, Namika. I'll go ahead and mark you down as being in charge of snacks. Yay! Yeah, wonderful. I Great. get to try okay. all my kitchen magic stuff. If I if I may, uh, I also want to remind you guys that as uh, upper school students, you are permitted to go to the surface uh, for uh, shopping or whatever uh, other needs, uh, clothes, or if you wanted to bring in uh, any kind of like Monday snacks for the catering, you are allowed to do that uh uh when the weekend comes so uh the end of classes tomorrow would start that period of time <laughs> um and theo as for your team uh your team is uh currently uh walking to their table with like an absurdly long like philly cheese steak like <laughs> the rest of the dance planning team mm. uh they're about to go in on that <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so thank you so much for these suggestions and i will be sure to get right on that okay i'm gonna go ahead and check in with my team but i hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your lunch and again uh for you uh students of course if there's anything you guys feel like you need you can always come to me again that box is in groups it's right next to actually the lavatory so feel free to drop it off there if you need to uh any non groups members you'll catch me around you can let me know Okay. Or uh, just send me a message through familiar. Cool. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then he just like walks away and then goes to his group, the planning committee to kind of scold them a little, or at least question. Like, okay. why yes. didn't we have hummus on the menu already? <laughs> no, right. Especially uh, the, I mean, like uh, professor Kumar is, uh, is Indian. So uh, he's open to like, <laughs> actual good foods and it's not going to be like the really crappy like rap catering that happens sometimes at dances no that's not that's not happening under uh professor kumar absolutely not <laughs> yeah, and i start going on about chat which is like all these sort of like snacks which are just delicious um and i can just like because you started talking about hummus, uh, Gwen, and that just gets me started on food. And, like, I feel like we could have, like, a conversation just about, like, grills and... Uh, Gwen is so shy and quiet, but as soon as you start talking about food, suddenly <laughs> opens up. 
Wynn kind of like looks around the table and says, wait, there's a dance coming up? Yeah, yeah, yeah I dance. guess so. When is that? It's this weekend. Oh, I'll It, it happens to... every year, right? I don't remember. I um, think Theo heard that as he was walking away <laughs> and just like... No. <laughs> Oh no! It's like a oh. chill. That, <laughs> oh, no, that must again. be that must be why he came into my class earlier. I wasn't really paying attention. Um, that sounds like fun. Are you guys going? Uh, I'm bringing yeah, snacks. I guess I am. I'll be oh. there. If you need anything to wear, I can help you out. Uh, <laughs> they kind of like look down at like the clothes they're wearing and like, I can I I have clothes. <laughs> You sure do. There's some semblance <laughs> of school uniform. Uh, yeah. It's not completely, uh, it's not gendered and it's not completely just like this is the winter option, this is the summer option or whatever. There are, uh, you know, a few different things, but you're generally generally expected to uh, don something of your house color, a tie or a pin uh, for the professors to keep track of you uh, and to be in uh where that like adults would say is like appropriate for school. So uh, no like graphic t-shirts for like class attendance, but they're, you're welcome to wear them in the dorms or like in your free time. Well, a dance sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, I mean, people drop all kinds of things at dances and like some of them are pretty, some of the stuff is pretty weird. Um, what, what do you I, mean they, they, what do you mean they drop them? Oh, uh, you know how like, you know, sometimes people are like doing things and they like get distracted and they don't remember what's in their hands. They kind of just drop things or they like fall out of pockets or bags. You can find like all like, sorts drop of... drop it like it's hot? Like that thing? Uh, if that's a reference, I don't know what it's to. Um, I don't care and drop it like it's but, hot. But if something was hot, I probably would drop it depending on how hot it was. Yeah, I mean, I would too. Yeah, I think I would drop something that was too hot to handle. Like potatoes. And as your yeah. conversation slowly loops around to hot potato, which is not <laughs> something I do. <laughs> not something I foresaw myself <laughs> saying, uh, you all hear uh, this, uh, this noise. Um, there are uh, are a few students uh, bursting through the dining hall doors in what is uh, an overly dramatic and for Theo probably a little bit of a stressful uh, display. Um, four students are involved in in this. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm going to keep going with the word display. That's the only one I can can use right now. There's one student who is holding their phone with their wand to it and thus amplifying the noise of a boop, 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 like a uh, like a heart monitor uh, slowing, uh, slowing to a stop. There are two students in scrubs and one lying in a bed, uh, like a cot bed that they've put uh, put up uh, using some uh, levitation uh, sort of magic. Uh, and they come in and they uh, are approaching your table uh, with rapid speed as the heart monitor starts to boo, boo, boo. Uh, I think Gwen had her cardigan around her waist and upon seeing people approach, puts her cardigan on to feel more protected. That's relatable as hell. Um, <laughs> uh, and they, they swing to a stop uh, as the heart monitor uh, stops as the two students in scrubs uh, begin to put on a little bit of a show. Like, doctor, doctor, is he still breathing? And uh, they pump the student in the bed's chest a few times and he goes, I, I, I don't think he is. I think we have to can I use him. healing magic on him? He's not actually dead. You can see him breathing. Um, <laughs> like a PSC? I mean, I as a player know that. But my character. 
uh, you can attempt to, to use a healing spell uh, if you would would like. You can roll uh, like a brain's magic for that. Uh, difficulty of, of 12 as he does not actually need to be healed. <laughs> Incredible. Let me make sure I know what I'm rolling. Okay. Let me go to the thing. Okay. Watch me not even make it. Incredible. Okay. Oh, hey, I got a fifth cane. So uh, what happens with you actually uh, ends up aiding the skit, uh, as you will see in quite uh, in just a moment. The uh, One of the students says, I think we have to declare him dead. Uh, and uh, as you cast the spell kind of under the table, you see this uh, kind of like green healing magic like creep up like the veins in the alleged victim's arm. And uh, where he would have just pretended to shoot back to life, uh, he really has like this jolt of energy in his arm. And it's much more realistic. Of, oh, holy shit. Uh, and uh, looks around uh, back and forth and sets his eyes on Florence and goes, uh, hey, you know, I'm dying to go to the dance with you. And no, what have I done? <laughs> what have she's I like head in hands, <laughs> very incredibly distressed. Her face is completely red. Um, you guys recognize the student uh, asking her as a... Um, uh, Calvin Stokes, who is in um, Aquila, which I don't think any of you are in, um, kind of a bigger shot uh, athlete on campus. Uh, and uh, Florence and Lillian go back to their whispering. Uh, and it's like a little bit louder now. So you guys at the table can kind of make out a little bit of what they're saying. Like, I wasn't planning on going, but it's him. You can't say no to him, right? No, you can't say no to him. You look like an idiot. I lean over uh, and I whisper, you can say no to whatever you want. Well, it's not that I did. He's hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you want to say yes, you can. I just wanted you to know that your consent is important in anything that has to do with you. And then I just lean oh. away. <laughs> she looks like a little touch. She's like, oh. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'll go with you or whatever. Uh, and, uh, the, uh, the students who were helping him with his, uh, proposal, uh, start a clap and try to prompt other people around to clap and it catches on. Uh, this I know from experience, it catches on until like <laughs> the, the whole like mess is, is applauded. <laughs> Theo is clapping so loud. He is so into this. He's just, yeah. You have to hear a click, you hear a click before that, though, because you have to add another person. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, that's right. Oh, um, very observing, Gwen. Very observing. Janner is kind of like fake clapping, kind of just like looking around like, yeah, this is so great. Okay. I'm so happy. And claps for a little too yeah. long. Uh, like they're still yeah. clapping and everyone's stopping. <laughs> and but yeah, with that, as the uh, applause eventually dissipates, uh, uh, some of the students are talking to other people who have come up to them and explaining like how they planned it and like what spell they used to uh, enchant the bed and like how the professor taught them how to do that and how like it was like a big uh, thing that everyone uh, is involved. I think we are going to cut to break. So uh, we will be back real soon. Uh, get some water and stretch your legs. Get ready for the second half of the dance prep episode of the On the Corridor. <laughs>